What's up, everybody, and welcome to ITG Daily, the show that brings you the hottest in gaming news each and every day. I'm Drew Bosley, that's Scott Savage, and you can join us at InsideTheGame.ca, our YouTube channel, Inside the Game Official. Make sure you subscribe while you're there, and of course, hit us up on our Fast channel over on Rad TV, all those other television streaming platforms around the globe, just like Jinx Esports TV, Amazon Prime, Roku, Samsung Plus, ES TV, the list goes on and on, but maybe... Just maybe you want the audio side. Well, you can do that as well. Hit us up on Fired Up Network. 212 platforms. We'll be right in your eardrums. Scott, what's on today's show? We have Mass Effect and how it is an incredibly long ways away still. <laughs> Super Mario Bros. moves its way to Netflix very soon. Modern Warfare 3 suffered from a rushed development cycle. We'll get more into that. And Mortal Kombat 1 Fatalities has, has received a lot of backlash. Certainly has. Scott, are you playing Call of Duty this weekend? I'm certainly going to be playing Call of Duty, yeah. I'm really questioning how this Zombies is going to work out. Modern Warfare Zombies is crazy weird to me, but um, I'm here for it. Ah, fair enough. I'll probably jump in there with you. Make sure you hit me up. I'll be checking it out. I'm working on the campaign as of right now. Our review's coming up next week, so make sure you stick around to that. But Scott, let's talk about it. It's Mass Effect. Just how far away is this next one? Scott, we were teased with N7 Day for Mass Effect, and well, it really didn't amount to anything. The next Mass Effect isn't expected until 2029 or later, reports claim. Oh, Chris Gullion over at VGC. Dude, this is something else, but we'll get into why. Because, well, there's a couple things. BioWare marked its annual N7 Day on Tuesday by publishing a teaser for its next Mass Effect game. Why would they do that? But let's get into it. However... <laughs> During Giant Bomb's Game Mess Morning Show on Wednesday, the sites of Jeff Grubb and Tamor Hussein both shared that according to their sources, the game is still a long way off. Quote, You want some original reporting? Grubb said. <laughs> this game is just nowhere near coming out. I was told that when, the, when they revealed Dragon Age Dreadwolf in 2018, this is a similar in terms of timeline. That was announced in 2018, and we're not getting that game until maybe next year. So now, do the math for that, and we're talking 2029 for Mass Effect 5. Hussein replied, quote, I've heard some things as well, and this game is so far away, it is so far away in another galaxy right now, end quote. <laughs> Gruff went oh, on to no. claim that his sources told him that N7 Day teaser was created mainly to reassure fans that the game was in the works rather than any sort of indication that the game wasn't coming anytime soon. But the game isn't coming anytime soon, Scott. That's the, oh, man, quote, when I was asked, it was just, it was just like, hey, is that just because they have to do something for N7 Day? Yes, for this thing, and that's all it is, end quote. Bioware's attention is still focused on Dragon Age Dreadwolf, which has yet to receive a solid release window. Grub reported in August that the game's release, quote, keeps getting pushed back, end quote, internally, after he discussed the behind-the-scenes goings-on at BioWare with unnamed sources following the news that BioWare was making a new round of layoffs. Ouch. Welcome to 2023. Earlier in August, er, early, earlier in August week, BioWare General Manager Gary McKay said that the company was cutting around 50 roles as part of the, quote, shift towards becoming a more agile and more focused studio, end quote. Grub sources claim Dragon Age Redwolf was one being considered for release in September 2023, but that game keeps getting delayed. The game's target release window was then moved to March 2024, <laughs> a while ago, but is currently planned to come out next summer, quote, at the earliest, end quote, is claimed. Oh. However, Grub also said, that he thinks, quote, very likely, end quote, that the game's release will get pushed back even further, probably to late year, possibly to early 2025. Oh, Scott. Oh, man. <clears throat> we are not seeing anything from Bioware for quite some time. Wow. I think I agree with the assessment there. I don't think it's going to stick that summer landing next year either. That's, uh... Do we, have we seen anything about Dreadwolf at all? Do we very, know very little about it. I no. think there was one image, maybe. There's a trailer. And... There's a there's a couple teaser trailers, but that's really about okay. it. And seven day, dude, at this point, really means nothing. It really doesn't mean a darn thing 
which is unfortunate for fans because it was such an iconic day that now Bioware feels that they have to put up something. But then all, that, all of a sudden, because they put up this trailer for Mass Effect, people are like, yo, is this coming? No, no, mm. no, no, not even close. Why? Because Dragon Age Dreadwolf is first. That's what they're working on right now. Not Mass Effect. There's a, probably a small team, a very, very small team, starting the planning stages of whatever Mass Effect next is going to be, right? Whatever it still Mass Effect sounds like it, <clears throat> it sounds like it is still on paper at this point. It's yep. nowhere near even conceptual phase, but no, uh, it's so painful because the way they laid out these strange trailers the other day and the, the manner they both fit together. Yeah, the cryptic nature of it makes it seem like it's an encoded message, but it's not. It's really just a an increased <laughs> fan nod. Because every fan of Mass Effect on N7 Day, that's the whole that's the whole thing. We all get together and talk about our glorious times through Mass Effect, the first and the last time. And now it's interesting that a corporate little a corporate little nod becomes such a message taken out of context. Well, that's I really I think it's I think it's emblematic of just how much excitement is behind Mass Effect. Sure. And even though it nearly destroyed itself with Andromeda, everybody still is so, so <laughs> yearning for Mass Effect 5 it, or 4, whatever we're calling it now. The only thing that makes me happy about this is it tells me I have lots of time to get caught up for Mass Effect, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh, man. This is like next year for N7 Day, they shouldn't post anything because it, mm. it, it just takes it to the whole other side for your audience that everybody who's looking for more Mass Effect do just, like you say, took it right out of context and go, oh man, here we go, this cryptic message. How about you just put up a thing going, hey, thanks to the fans, we're still working on the game. That would <laughs> solidify that, yeah, we do acknowledge that you are excited just as much as we are over here at Bioware. I'm speaking for them here, but you know what I mean. It's one of those yeah. things of, hey, thank you for your fandom. We're working on it. Up first though, Dragon Age Dreadwolf, get ready for that. Like, that's how they should lay this out. Not with some cryptic code and then a person walking through a corridor. Like, dude, that was just, that was such a setup the other day. Like, fans lost their mind. Mm -hmm. And then now we're met with, uh, nope, 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 not, not coming. Like, it's just, man, don't do that to your fan base. It sours the fan base then in that case, right? Just let the hype ride, but don't tamper with it too much because there's a fine um, balance. And I think they just kind of shot themselves in the foot. Well, on the, the length of development cycles on this, too, if this is all to be believed, do we even know what console we're going to be playing this on? What next generation one. it? It Dude, it'll be on the next one. Be next one. Yeah, it will not be on the PS5 or the Xbox Series X and S. It will skip this entire generation and move into the next one. Oh, hey, I really want it to be a lot stronger, a lot fuller of a universe than Andromeda was. A galaxy, Man. I should say. Dude, okay, so now I'm like, okay, I got till 2029 at, at, at earliest, right? <laughs> I have lots of time to get into this world and figure things out and see what the hype is really there for me to keep me through. But I guess time will tell, just like time will tell when this comes out. <laughs> Scott, the Mario Brothers movie was a huge success and it's going to get a couple more eyes as it's coming to Netflix. Chris Scullion over at BGC. The news was announced on the official Netflix, Netflix Twitter account, which stated that the film will be added to the streaming service on December 3rd. Quote, for the families that go a little too hard on Mario Kart over the holidays, the Super Mario Brothers movie will be on Netflix to help the healing. December 3rd, <laughs> end quote. The, the tweet healing. reads. That's funny. So there you go, Scott. Uh, good for Netflix. I really don't have too much to say about this one, man. I'm like, okay, cool. They're getting another movie. It's kind of what they do, but I guess it's a bigger deal because it's Super Mario Brothers. Have you seen the movie yet? I still have not seen the movie. <laughs> I'm quite ashamed for that. So this might be my opportunity and many other people's opportunity. Well, but that's just it, right? As much as I've heard the, the Mario movie is great, uh -huh. I want to see it. But I even more so than that, want to see a Star Fox movie. I'm putting this out into the ether right now. <laughs> We're getting, there's conversation of Legend of Zelda live action movie. I think that's a mistake, personally. But I think a Star Fox movie would be excellent. And Netflix, if you're listening, <laughs> what what a better place to host it. Absolutely, yeah. There's definitely some opportunity, right? They're now diving into more areas with Nintendo that maybe one day you could get a Star Fox. But 
Dude, I wouldn't hold your breath on that one. Scott, Modern Warfare 3 is finally here, but dude, it is all over the place. Modern Warfare 3 was reportedly developed in just 16 months. Maybe that's why. Tom Ivan over at BGC. Mm. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, and some of its creators reportedly suffered from a rush development cycle that, that saw the game's campaign made in about 16 months. Over a dozen current and former Call of Duty developers told Bloomberg that the project initially started life as an expansion to last year's Modern Warfare 2, which would have taken place in Mexico and have been achievable in the time frame. However, it's claimed that Activision executives later rebooted the project, telling developers at Sledgehammer Games that it would instead be a full-blown sequel featuring the globe-trotting adventures that the franchise has become known for. Some staff, who reportedly had to work nights and weekends to finish the game, said they felt let down because they'd be pushed that... Oh, sorry, they'd been promised that this type of crunch wouldn't happen again after the studio's previous game, Call of Duty Vanguard, which was made under a similarly constrained development cycle. Developers also expressed frustration at having to seek content approval from the original Call of Duty developer in Modern Warfare sub-series creators infinity ward a process which was reportedly insufficient and sometimes resulted in significant and unwanted changes having to be made statement comes from aaron harlan studio head of sledgehammer games here we go quote we're incredibly proud of modern warfare 3 both the full game experience at launch and the upcoming year of content we have planned for the community on behalf of the extremely talented team across sledgehammer games and our partner studios from whom we've collaborated on development this has be, been a labor of love to lead the first ever back-to-back -back sequel in call of duty we cannot wait to see our community's reaction to all of the entire game has to offer across campaign multiplayer and <coughs> zombies from start from the start to development we have all been laser focused on creating next groundbreaking call of duty game Long before we wrapped up our previous game, we heard loud and clear from fans about the desire to stay, stay and play together for longer within the same series. And that's what we've delivered. The first true sequel in franchise history. It is also why we added features like Carry Forward for the first time to honor the investment our players have made in the Modern Warfare series. We're proud of the team to lead the way of Modern Warfare 3. We have worked hard to deliver this on this vision, which has been years in the making. Anything said in the contrary is simply not true. This is mm. our game, and we cannot wait to play it online with all of you. End quote. Scott, is he covering himself right there at the end? Yeah, do you feel an air of defensiveness a uh, out bit. of this statement? Just, just a small... It clearly is addressing the allegations that this is a glorified DLC. Yeah, and that is what I've seen spun up the conversation since this was announced is essentially is this going to just be a big DLC full of maps that are all old we already know of uh, using Warzone locations to kind of make I don't want to say an easier time assembling a campaign sure. or a lazier time assembling campaign I don't mean to be disrespectful but it seems that the reused assets a lot of these things do really point to the, this being a not a full release a full price title and although i haven't played enough to give you my opinion on whether it is a full released full price title it's certainly the the allegation yeah the <clears> allegations are right there out. that's for sure right so i've i've played the game i've started it i've not completed the campaign but dude it's just more call of duty right and yeah. if you're into it you're into it if you're not then don't get it but that's just it's straight up that is what it is right but it is man like i as i'm playing along like here's my early synopsis on my review already as i'm playing mm -hmm. i'm like dude i've done this already like a thousand yeah. times for call of duty so i don't know we'll finish it up and then we'll get our full review at next week so make sure you stick around and look for that but at the same time dude it's call of duty and you can't crunch people in just a year and a half and expect them to be happy about it working weekends working nights you know we work weekends we work nights every once in a while as well but it's just it's on our own time. We're not forced to say, hey, this is what you have to do. And that this yeah. is the case here, right? This is a case of crunch creeping back in after they've been told not to worry about crunch. Well, that and, lends to be a problem. 
Well, and with an uncomfortable situation, having to verify all of oh. your content as it's going through, I can see the, the stress being dialed back up. Yep. And this is after a few years where that was focused. That was the real focus of the industry was to get rid of this awful negativity. And we were all okay. I thought at least we all as gamers yeah. were okay with waiting another year for a Call of Duty title, but yeah. they will not wait. <laughs> no, it's the executives at the top, right? Who said, no, we want more money. We want a bigger game. And that's what it comes down to. Call of Duty did so well last year that they want to capitalize and make that happen again this year. And I don't think it's going to. I think it's going to do just fine. I don't think Call of Duty is going to suffer this year whatsoever. But I don't think it's going to meet the numbers that last year's game did. But again, it's right into that life cycle of Call of Duty. Another year, Call of Duty. Another year, Call of Duty. It's another year, it's another Call of Duty. And that's what we're getting into this cycle here. And man, I, at this point in time, dude, I really can't believe Call of Duty is still going. Still sustainable, yeah. yeah. I wonder how long that really will be before we see something change in the way it's delivered. I think I that's what the Call of Duty HQ app is supposed to be. Yeah. Um, so it becomes updates, yearly updates, instead of a yearly full purchase. Yeah, absolutely. Let us know if you're jumping in over the weekend. Are you playing Call of Duty? Hit us up on Twitter, the official ITG. Scott fans, we're in an uproar over Mortal Kombat's paid fatality. Well... Warner Brothers may have actually been listening. I know. I'm shocked too. Warner Brothers <laughs> responds to Mortal Kombat's one $10 fatality backlash with two free fatalities. Yep. Here we go. Wesley Yim pull over at IGN. Warner Brothers is giving Mortal Kombat 1 players who bought the controversial $10 Halloween fatality two free fatalities amid a ferocious backlash over the fighting game's aggressive monetization. Mortal Kombat 1 publisher Warner Brothers Games and developer NetherRealm were heavily criticized in October 2023 for selling a Halloween fatality for oh, 1,200 dragon crystals, which is basically 10 bucks. Now, as Mortal Kombat 1's first DLC character, Omni-Man, goes live, we have word that a seasonal fatality bundle will be sold from next, from next week. This includes the aforementioned Halloween fatality, as well as a Thanksgiving fatality and an upcoming winter fatality. <laughs> what is going on? I here? can't wait for the, the Valentine's Day fatality. Oh, man. Yeah. Warner Brothers has yet to announce the price for that bundle, but it's expected to be around the $30 mark. Dude, we're paying for oh. fatalities. This is crap. And here's the key point. Those who bought the fat Halloween fatality will have access to the bundle at no extra cost. Quote, we appreciate your feedback on all everything Mortal Kombat 1, end quote, reads a statement. As you'd expect, this make good has done little to dampen community anger over the fact Mortal Kombat 1 sells fatalities in the first place, although some believe it's a step in the right direction. Who believes that? This is a general sense yeah. of negativity around Mortal Kombat 1, with many players saying the freemium style monetization has no place in a game people paid at least $70 for. Mortal Kombat has said Mortal Kombat, sorry, Warner Brothers has said Mortal Kombat 1 has sold over more than 3 million copies of the game since launch. Scott, dude, I am not paying for a fatality. No, no, you're very strong about this one, I feel. <laughs> Absolutely. This is a joke. I get they want to monetize. Then put, okay, here's the thing. Then put the battle pass as the monetization option. Do that. Yeah. There's a way to include the fatalities. Then we can go in, earn our dragon crystals, buy those fatalities or whatever. Something along that line would be more welcoming than say, hey, just straight up pay for a fatality. Now you want to charge me $30 for three fatalities? I'm still paying $10 a fatality. So those who were mad for the Halloween one got in, bought the fatality, and... They get two free fatalities because they're not going to have to pay for the next round of fatalities. Dude, I... Yeah, just, oh my god, I'm mad, dude. Yeah, just kind of more tossed on top. Um, but then that's not really fair if you were holding out. And now it turns out that was the right decision to buy anyways, which was not what everybody was happy to do. It doesn't seem like this is a very good situation with a very good way of cleaning it up afterwards either. Unless yeah. you're going to launch these two... Um, fatalities as just a free update just put it out there for everybody and now everybody gets some but then again how do you you still burnt the people that paid outright 
It's, it's, it's such a mess. It reminds me of oh, Star man. Wars Battlefront. Dude, this is a disaster. I don't. So you reward those who paid early and bought the ten dollar fatality by giving them two free fatalities, but then you're still everybody else is still mad that we had to buy fatalities in the first place. But yet you reward those who bought it and say screw you to those who didn't, and you have to buy them for thirty dollars now with the upcoming two other fatalities. So those who held off essentially aren't getting anything at all. The ones who did buy in early are getting two free fatalities for ten dollars. Mm hmm. It what? sounds like the only way I would solve this solution or the the solution I see is if you offered some sort of a refund or credits or however they determine to do that and then offer these fatalities as a free update and just that would be a complete reversal. Whoops. We hear you loud and clear. Sorry, man. Like this isn't a back step. They heard your feedback and said too bad. Buy some more. Like that's what they're taking here. Nether Realms, Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers doesn't care at all, right? If anybody cares, it's Nether Realm. But they're being forced from the top probably to do this because they want to make everything a games of service now over Warner Brothers, right? We just talked about it yesterday on the show. Here we yeah. go. This is that model. This is where Nether Realms takes Mortal Kombat into that live service experience, dude. I'm there for the daily challenges. There's the weekly challenge. It's all there. But I bought the expansive battle, like the expansive version of Mortal Kombat 1 because I knew I wanted the DLC characters. Omni-Man dropped yesterday, so when the new season rolls around, we'll get another character, right? Another season rolls around, another character. That's how that's going to go down, but then I'm not paying for these extra fatalities. I really don't care. At the end of the day, fatalities are very, very cool. And it's definitely a staple of where Mortal Kombat is compared to everybody else in the fighting genre, right? Street Fighter, yeah. nothing. Tekken, nothing. Nobody competes with Mortal Kombat. Dude, not in my eyes anyways, but nobody does what they do either, right? That, that's the other mm -hmm. side of it. Nobody does the fatality. Nobody. Absolutely no one. And I'm shocked, dude, that nobody's ever actually attempted to kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Say, hey, we can rip off some limbs here too. But the Halloween one, mm -hmm. if you haven't seen it, they put a pumpkin on the opponent's head. All these, like, insects come rolling out. They drop to their knees. They kick the head off, and it goes splat against the door. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is pretty comical, but I'm still at the end of the day, dude. I'm not paying ten dollars, and I'll be damned if I'm paying thirty dollars. Scott, it's the end of the week, buddy. We're about to take the weekend off, but before we go, there's a couple games to play. What are people playing this weekend? We have Grace of Etoile. That's on PC, PlayStation Four, or Five, Xbox One, X, and S. Strike Force Heroes is on PC. Air Twister is on PC, PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, XS, and the Switch. Ocelot Sunrise is on PC. Undercat joins that as well on PC. And Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is finally in full release now in PC, PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, X, and S. Nice. There you go. This is not a threat. Not an if. But when. And that'll wrap up today's show, everybody. Thank you for hanging out with us. This has been ITG Daily, the show that brings you the hottest in gaming news each and every day, Monday to Friday. We'll be back again. I'm Drew. That's Scott. And we'll see you inside the game.